not a good diagnosis. So you can see we've got a 394 here on the bench, 395. Um, local Amish guy does firewood, timber stuff. He, uh, he brought it in a year ago, last year sometime, and air filters torn up, the top end was all scored up, and I said, well, what, he was uh, kind of a newer customer, so sometimes what I do for new guys, especially locals, uh, if they cover just the basic rebuild labor, I'll port it for free if I'm going ahead and putting a top end on it, you know, and they cover cost of parts. So he elected to do that. Got him a nice shiny new OEM top end that now is unfortunately wasted. Real simple works all build. He runs 24 inch bars on these. I don't even think. No, he does run an eight pin. Okay. So he's taking advantage of the, the torque and the chain size. But in any case, um, brought it back today. He's used it for about a year. He's running a 592 and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, it was making a horrible clacking noise. Um, so I slowly started looking at stuff. I tore the clutch off just to eliminate that as a possibility of the oiler. Um, sometimes these bells, they kind of had a ringing noise to it. And these will... They, they, can, they can sound weird, especially when they're on the saw and there's crap on them. So I slowly just started taking stuff off until I was able to get down to my worst fear, which is the crankshaft. Let me let me pull you in here. Well, I'll show you the damage here on the cylinder first. You can see it. Let me get a light here. So you can see that really is the worst of it right there. That big old gouge right by the transfer. Um, the metal came up through the bottom of the case and got into... Yeah, that side's ugly too. The band actually is probably savable. Uh, if somebody were to, you know, want to sleeve it or something of that nature. The intake port and the exhaust port look to be, you know, put some bevels on there and probably live with it. But let me show you what we found in our diagnoses. So if you come in here, all right, so we've got a crankshaft here. Now these cranks, the skilled eye is going to know right away there's something off with it and that's the collaring these these will sometimes get a little bit of collar to them but they shouldn't be just painfully discolored like that right so when you're looking at crankshafts what is my camera doing why is it spinning that doesn't make a lick of sense okay now that you're not spinning when you're looking at your crankshafts they can move laterally and I don't really mean a twist Right, this is twisting. This is no bueno. Right, but they can move laterally on the pin and on the bearing. The second they get any twist like this, you know, like so, or or like this, you see how bad that is. That's that's horrendous. That's definitely the clunking noise. Um, and if you are able to see it in there, let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit. How do I do that? Oh, I have just plain old lost the zoom wheel on my thing. I don't know. Um, if you're able to sneak your eyes in there, you can see that that bearing is broken. I mean, it's not just that the needles have given up and left. It's that the cage itself is actually fractured and fragmented and is not doing the thing. There we go. I can figure out how to work a device. So, no, well, maybe I can. Anyway, yeah, you can see the fractured part there. Um, it's just not good. So, I'm going to have to wait and see what he says he wants to do, but I figured this made a decent little video on how to check if your big end bearing is okay. Um, like I said, lateral movement like this, that's okay. Pretty much any other movement's not okay. This is bad, twisting's bad, vertical movement's bad. So, there you go. Have a nice day.